Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, <clears throat> I make a hopeful mistake because uh, my computer wasn't uh, plugged out and uh, no battery. So it's uh, a very good uh, beginning for my presentation. And uh, what you can see on this slide is uh, the double format. The double format means that I am retired. Okay. So what I'm doing here, I'm here for at least two reasons. The first one is that I know very well Roberto. And the second one is that I know very well Scilab. So what I'm going to explain is only my experience with Scilab in the context of what, what we, are talking, we are talking about today. It is Sotra heritage and story. So what is Scilab? Uh, the, the funny uh, bird here is a puffin, uh, Macareux moine. So it's the puffin of Scilab, but the same that uh, Linux has also is bird, which is a penguin. Okay. Everybody has a bird for that. So Scilab is numerical computation, okay? It's only by numerical computation, mathematical function, matrix computation, graphics, and lot of things like that, it's applied mathematics, okay? It's a full-fledged software with uh, visualization, viable editor, embedded help, and all these kinds of things. And it works on every computer existing now in the world. At the beginning, it was only on the old Unisys. And now uh, it's... Uh, only all computers. I, I'm not going to tell more about Scilab because it's not the purpose of my presentation. So this is a software that you can download today and use it because it is free software. What is more interesting is to know where does Scilab come from? It's an old, it depends, it's not as old as Magmalis, okay? <laughs> but in the 90, we need at Inria to have a, this kind of software for the people making automatic control. And the project began in, uh, at Inria in 1990, and in 1994, the first version of Scilab was put on, no, not on the internet, on what Roberto told about FTP Anonymous, okay? at this time, okay? And after that, we have uh, various different organizations taking in charge Scilab, INRIA, a thing called Digiteo INRIA. And after that, we create a company, a company called Scilab Enterprises. We took in charge Scilab and continue to develop it and to distribute it. And it was still free. To sell a free software, it was very interesting for a company. <coughs> so it was, we wanted to, to, to make money by uh, services and so on, but it's not very good. But in the world, there was more than 150 countries in the world downloading Scilab about uh, two, uh, 2014, about 100,000 monthly downloads, what's a lot even from country I didn't even know they exist, okay, when you receive a lot. Then Scilab Enterprises stopped and was sold to PSC Group. And the last avatar of his story is very, very soon is August when Dassault System bought Scilab to PSC Group. So it's not the end of Scilab, Scilab continues. And that's a system also take all the Scilab development team, what was at ASC group or before. So an old software still living and with a big company in charge with it now. Okay, this is Scilab. So what? What is interesting with Scilab, I think, I'm not talking now about what Scilab does, but what Scilab is is a big software. 
it's uh, at the beginning it was only Fortran, but now it's for Fortran, C, C, Java, and so on. It's one million line codes. It's a very big thing that uh, is Scilab. From the first version of Scilab 1.1 .1 in 1994 to now, the 6.1, there were 43 versions in 28 years. So it will be very funny to put this in software heritage, okay? There were many developers. At the beginning, there were so-called Scilab group with six people. Then you have seen many organizations who are in charge of Scilab, organizations like Inuria, companies, and so on. And Scilab is still used everywhere in the world. So I think that it's very interesting to have this kind of software because there is all the, the kind of metadata Roberto was talking about. And it will be not so simple to put all the good metadata. Now, so we did, okay, I'm going to put Scilab in the, in the machine. So this is the story of a story. This is only my own uh, impression. You should know that I am not a computer scientist. I am an amateur computer scientist. So we talk, we, I talked to Roberto in March and we first tried to put it in a thing called I don't know we say in English, HAL in RIA, but it's made mainly for papers. And Scilab is not a paper, it's 48 versions. So it doesn't fit the, the HAL in RIA. So we begin with SWAP in April two, 2020, okay? And then COVID. <laughs> so everything stopped. And we began in June, last June, so the work is Scilab source code and Scilab story. I don't know what it is the most more complicated, but now I will explain the source code. It's easy to get all the Scilab source code versions. Easy, there were a strange thing is that, in fact, I think I'm the only guy in the world having the 10 first Scilab versions. I don't know why, but I keep everything, okay? So I have them. It is a good thing for Scilab. If not, we don't have the beginning of a story. So this is easy. I read the 16 pages of SWAP and tried to understand them. I failed. <laughs> and I see GitHub. Ah, GitHub. I, I already, always already use GitHub a few years ago for for, for a book. And at this, that time, I didn't understand exactly what it worked, how it worked. And when I see that we have to put it in GitHub, I don't understand completely how it works. So fortunately, we have only to copy a thing. I copy the thing from Unipisa and up, I put Scilab in it. <laughs> the work is in progress. <laughs> for the story is more complicated because I forgot many things. So I had to go through all the files, all the source code, all the papers, all the mails, everything to see exactly the source code, the functionality and the organization in charge. It took me a long, a long time to do that. Okay. We get documentations, screenshots, pictures that were everywhere. We are interviewed by Elisabetta about the story. And we have more work to do, bibliography, manual demos. There are a number of papers about Scilab all around the world. It's difficult to, to choose and to do. But this is the Scilab story. This is a GitHub source. Wikidata, what is Wikidata? People told me uh, we need to put things in Wikidata. I know Wikipedia. Is, it, ah, is there a link between, is it Wikipedia to Wikidata, Wikidata to Wikipedia? I don't know. 
And as Kat explained just before, Wikidata to the stories, Wikipedia also to the story, Wikimedia Common, I didn't understand, go to Wikipedia and everywhere, and the GitHub source code as a link. I'm not sure about all the arrows. It is a good direction. And I'm not sure there are not more arrows. So, poor Claude Gomez. Mm. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's only my experience. I think that in fact, everything had been thought and everything is done in order, as Roberto said yesterday, to have a very good um, in order of all the source code and everything with a good metadata, which is very important. But really for me, it was very difficult to understand. So as a conclusion, I think that the process, as I said, is very good, very robust, is very well thought, but for me, for a simple normal human being like me, perhaps it would be better to explain more of the things if possible. Anyway, the puffin we say at the end, that I'm very happy to be part of the adventure. And I will continue to put all my knowledge in the story. Thank you.